Welcome to Real Talk Real Women. My name is Miriam Kaladi and today we have fitness expert, author, motivational speaker, conscious eating coach, founder of the Sati Life Institute and creator of Intensati, Patricia Moreno on the show. Welcome Patricia, how are you? I'm good, I'm happy to be here. Uh, you're most welcome, thank you so much. <laughs> You've been training, mentoring and educating people for over 30 years now, but how did it all start? I started teaching aerobics when I was in high school. I found a jazzercise class that I loved. Jazzercise is a like a dance fitness workout and I always wanted to be a dancer. And then I took that class and I just fell in love with it and how I felt. I was very overweight at the time and it helped me lose weight and so I decided I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, great. Uh, so you wanted to end your own struggle with weight, eating disorder and body image issues and ended up creating the Intensati method. Tell us more about it. Yes, I had I got into the fitness field and I lost weight and I was feeling strong and doing a lot of great things like traveling around the world and doing aerobics competitions and things like that but I still had trouble with food and mainly an eating disorder bulimia and so I really wanted to create I really for myself wanted an answer about how to create lasting change for myself because being in the fitness field I wanted to be able to not only help myself but help other people that were having the same problems and so I realized that there was a piece missing which was you know it's not just about the actions that we take but it's the mental state that really influences and impacts the long-term effectiveness of what we do and after studying a lot of meditation and yoga and personal empowerment courses, I thought that the best way to train was to really get present to the voice inside our head and how that really becomes either an obstacle or um, support to our long-term goals. On your website, you also write about how your family went on some kind of new diet or try a new supplement every few months. You see that behavior a lot. What makes it so destructive? Because usually when people go and we do kind of these quick fix type of diets, either extreme diets, eliminating a whole food category, taking out all carbs or taking out all of this, it's too extreme. And we don't learn the long-term lifestyle habits that it takes, how to really create positive change without just trying to lose the weight, right? People focus on how can I lose weight fast versus how can I develop new habits that will promote the long-term lifestyle that I want. Yeah, I agree. And for some reason, people always tend to try the next new thing, even if the pre previous ones didn't work. Do you think it's human nature to look for a quick fix or is it simply a lack of knowledge? I think it's a little bit of both. I think that people get to a state where they feel very uncomfortable, very unhappy. They feel pain in their body or in their mind. They suffer, right? We suffer when we feel unhappy with ourselves. And so we want to relieve the pain as quickly as we possibly can. And, you know, people make great promises that quick fixes help and we tend to want to believe it. And there's more information about the, the extreme diets or the quick fixes than there is about slow and steady. And, you know, when people are feeling pain, they want to have a resolution quickly. And so it's normal. But I think after time and time again of trying those same types of things over and over again, people then start to realize that in order to have change, they have to change. You were on your first diet when you were in third grade, weighing 130 pounds and ended up weighing 212 pounds as a child. You write online about feeling ashamed and horrified about your weight and body. When did you realize that there was a better way, a better you? Oh, not till I was in my late 20s because I had been exercising, but then exercise became that same thing. I was over-exercising for many years, five, seven hours a day, really extreme, trying to outdo my bad diet habits. And I got very depressed and I got very um, just frustrated in not being able to make the changes that I wanted. And I really realized that diet is a huge part of it. And no matter how much we try to overexercise it, it's just not possible. So I had to really just deal with making real long-lasting change in my nutritional habits. 
and you discovered working out and loved it. You became very fit and even won national aerobics titles, but you were still afraid of the moment you stopped you would end up at square one. Tell us about meeting Judith Brisman and how that changed things for you. Um, I was, it was at the point where I was really depressed. I was actually, I had my own television show and I was teaching an exercise program, a live exercise program, five days a week. And when I started the program, I was in great shape and I was very fit and thin. But then as the program progressed, I started gaining weight again. And the executive producer of the show called me into his office to say that I had been gaining too much weight. And so I was just embarrassed and ashamed and actually so just finally at the edge of my rope realizing I really needed to change. And I reached out to this woman, Dr. Judith Bressman, who specialized in eating disorders. And she really had me really get that so much of my suffering was based on blaming a lot of my past. And so we worked on being able to heal all of those ideas of my past and myself so that I could really heal my eating disorder. And I love how you explain how you looked at exercise as a way of paying for your overindulgence rather mm -hmm. than a necessary act of love and self-care. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's one of the things that I teach a lot about is it's not the action that we're doing, but it's the intention behind it. So when you exercise from a place where you want to pay for your sins or you feel ashamed of yourself, then every bit of exercise you do, you are affirming, I hate myself. I have to go work out because I'm too fat. I have to go work out because I'm ugly. I don't look right. I'm bad. So every exercise, every moment of exercise you do, you keep affirming, I'm bad. I'm ugly. I'm not enough. But when you exercise from a state of love, I love my body, I need my body for my life, my body needs exercise, and so and the exercise is an act of love for myself, for my future, for my work, for my self-expression, then every action that you do while you're exercising is an expression of love. And those are two very different ways of exercising. You've devoted your life to helping people change the way they look at food, exercise and themselves. Help them find what you call thinner peace. What does that mean? Thinner peace means finding that peace within yourself where you're no longer trying to get to that place where you think you'll be beautiful in the future when you lose 10 pounds, where you think your people will like you more if you have the right body or if you're beautiful enough. It's at being peace with yourself and realizing that the health and the beauty are attributes of love. And so you find that place within yourself that's accepting of yourself and that leads to the body that is best for you. And let's talk a little bit about your Sari Life Institute and the meaning of living a Sari life. What is it all about and how did it come together? Sati means mindfulness. And so the practice of Sati Life is to train yourself to be more and more present, more conscious, so that the actions that you do, the foods that you choose to eat, the way you interact with yourself and others is conscious. And when you realize that there's a consequence for everything that you think, eat, say, and do, and you take actions consciously with the consequence of your actions in mind, then you start to really be able to develop and, and live the life that you really want because you can train yourself to choose things that will have long-term positive consequences versus just in-the-moment gratification. Amazing. So it has a lot to do with uh, courage, awareness and self-discipline to make choices that benefit yourself, but also the world. Let's take those three areas and break them down. Let's start with your courage. You talk about having been afraid that if you stopped your in intense exercise regimen, you would gain all the weight back. How did you find the courage to break free from that? And what advice around courage can you give women who feel the same way? Well, we have to remember that our health and our weight is not just from the amount of exercise that we do. There are a lot of components and you can see that that's true because not everybody who's thin and fit does the same amount of exercise. There are people that are thin and fit that actually don't do any exercise, right? So it, it's more than just the exercise that we're doing. And when I realized that I had to 
get honest with myself and really courageous to deal with the foods that I was eating. It helped me realize that I didn't have to keep this level of intense exercise up the rest of my life. I could actually do significantly less. And by being courageous enough to look at the whole picture of my health and well-being, then I would actually lose the fear that if I stopped exercising, I would get fat again. Another area you guide people in is the area of awareness. In fact, Sari is being in, in a state of awareness without judgment, right? And right. How, and how does one become aware of one's thoughts, words, attitudes and actions? It's very important to have a daily practice of some kind because to be really aware of your thoughts, your words and your actions, you have to really make a commitment to it because we tend to just get in our habits, our way of thinking, our way of seeing, the same way to work, we eat the same things, we interact with the same people, we schedule our, our, our life. So it's hard to stay present, really present. So meditation is very, very important. And it doesn't have to be where you're sitting down with your legs crossed, but starting in the morning, even just by journaling your intention for the day, that's all, that's a very important practice. Having a seated meditation obviously is very powerful and really acts, gives you access to being able to be self-aware. And then also just even things simply like putting notes up around or having an exercise where you, at the end of your day, you journal. How did it go today? What did I do today? A food journal is a very good way to do it too, just so that you're present and you can start going, why am I making these choices? Because often we don't even know what we're doing and we're wondering why we feel or look a certain way. And finally, you talk about self-discipline. Can anyone learn to develop uh, this, this skill? And what is the best advice you can give around it? Um, yes, anybody can learn to develop this skill, but it's important the difference between negative discipline and positive discipline. Negative discipline is like I said earlier, I'm so fat I have to go to the gym and work out. Trying to motivate ourselves from making ourselves feel bad that would cause pain because usually it takes pain for us to do something about our lives. But positive discipline is about looking for the reasons why the change that we want to make will benefit us and others and really going from a place of self-love and self-respect and then it's imperative that you practice being able to say you're going to do something and following through because without your ability to do what you say you're going to do you don't have the ability to change your life i agree thank you so much for sharing thank you <laughs> and where can people go to learn more about you online They can go to satilife.com, S-A-T-I-L-I-F-E.com. Okay, great. And I will make sure to put the link below this video. Thank you. That would be wonderful. No problem. Is there anything else you would like to talk about today, Patricia? Um, no, I think that for me, the importance of really taking your health, mental, physical health is an act of love. And the more that we recognize that and the more that we make positive changes in that direction, I think the more our whole life blossoms into the best it can be. Thank you so much, Patricia. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. And thank you so much for watching. My name is Miriam Kaladi and I will see you on the next episode of Real Talk, Real Women. <laughs>